Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Seeing none, any witnesses in opposition? Mr. Chair, members, Nancy Chaitis Espinosa, on behalf of the California School Boards As Association, we must respectfully oppose this bill. Um, the issue in question has a solution. It has multiple solutions under existing law. First, if the boundaries of the school districts don't meet the needs of the people that they serve, they can reorganize those boundaries within existing law. And of course, there is um, the existing interdistrict transfer process, which as the author mentioned, in most of these cases has already been granted. So um, uh, people who live here are not forced to, quote, borrow addresses. The issue does, in fact, have a solution, which, um, as evidenced by the testimony given, has been working uh, in favor of, of most of the people who have requested it. Um, there are some more, some broader, more troubling issues here. Um, this bill would impose uh, upon the ability of the districts to plan for successive years. It would effectively be a, a mandatory open enrollment. So without being able to reliably project their their uh, attendance in out years, they, would, they wouldn't be able to um, reliably plan for facilities, staffing, and all of those various issues. Um, further, this bill would set a troubling precedent by saying that the uh, authority of a local educational agency would have to take second place in comparison to other parts of the local government system, specifically here in municipal government. And uh, we really think that it would be inappropriate for the legislature to presuppose what these decisions should be. Um, the district has been making those on a case-by-case -case basis. So uh, we respectfully request your opposition to this measure. Good afternoon. My name is Barbara Kilponen, and I am the president of the Fullerton Joint Union High School District Board of Trustees. I am here in opposition to uh, AB 523. Currently, 58 students living in the city of La Palma attend district schools. In general, district uh, students residing in La Palma would attend Buena Park High School since that high school's boundaries include a portion of La Palma. We have nine other cities that we have a portion of as well. However, because of the district's open enrollment policy, 15 of the 58 students attend district high schools other than Buena Park, and they attend more than half of our other high schools. We have eight in, in total. Since the 2012 uh, and 13 school year, in other words, three years, the district has approved 40 interdistrict requests from La Palma students living in the district boundaries to attend Kennedy High School in La Palma. During that same period, three years, the district denied only eight interdistrict requests of La Palma students to attend Kennedy. None of the, the, these folks denied. Um, an interdistrict request, uh, none of these folks denied an interdistrict request, appealed the decision over the three years to the Orange County Department of Education Board of Education. We, uh, the six high schools in the district provide a wide range of high qu quality curricular and co curricular programs for all students. In the final analysis, opposition to AB 2. Uh, 523 is based on the fact that the bill is unnecessary. Existing code uh, provides a process to address the issues of this legislation, and we have effectively met the needs of La Palma students on a case-by-case -case basis and have um, given uh, re uh, uh, transfers to a large majority of those um, over the past three years. I have more data, but I don't know that you need to spend more time on it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any further in opposition? Seeing none, uh, members of the committee, I, I just have a comment, and I, I had some questions that I came up with, and I appreciate you advocating for children, and I appreciate you advocating for your uh, assembly district. But in realize I bring the perspective of one who grew up in an area where I drove past other schools to get to my school every day, so it's not at all, it's not all foreign to me to, to, to see that occur. And in fact, my own high school that I taught at, we had many transfers in, many out. Um, so it, it had already been shared that existing law addresses the issue by providing a process for those desirous of attending another school district. And, and the numbers we have are different than the numbers presented, quite frankly, as far as denials. Um, in 12-13, there were 22 uh, applicants, transfer requests received, 21 approved, one was denied. 
And I don't know why it was denied. It could have been that they didn't even live in the area that they claimed. I can't tell you why. But I think they need to appeal. They need to follow the process through so that we can really understand if the district is being a good actor here. Um, so again, I, I think existing law offers a path. And the, the neighboring school district has been very supportive and yet no one's appealed. Why did they not appeal? I can't tell you why, but uh, I, I think that is an issue. And I think it is, it's been pointed out, should the legislature design school district boundaries and fall back to city boundaries? I don't know if that's a good precedent. I, in fact, I think it's not. So, uh, you, know, I, you know, if there's a problem, I, I think the people need to come to the table. I don't think it should take a bill to force the individuals to the table. Um, I'll take it your face value that they haven't been willing to come to the table. I think that's very problematic to me as one who sits behind this dais, that they haven't been willing to come to the table. You know, I'll do my part to ensure they do come to the table, but I can't support this as this sits now, today, until I see more evidence that they're just being recalcitrant, reluctant to be more open-minded and, and help kids out, help kids succeed. Sure, thank you for asking those questions. Obviously, um, the appeals process has been made, good faith uh, actions have been made to try to resolve this at the local level by reaching out to the Fullerton School Districts. But rather than me trying to respond to those, I'm gonna defer that to the city officials who have worked on this issue for decades. In the case of uh, Mayor Prutem, who's here with us, uh, Jerry Go uh, Godhar, he has been fighting this for decades and he can address the, the appeals process, why it is not working, and he can address many other issues but that you're raising. I've got Please. several years worth of data here that does reflect that they've been accepting transfer requests. They have, but then, okay. As I we would, understand yes. it, again, the basis of it is to follow the state law. The state law states that if a parent can show that they, they work in the district, the transfer has to happen. What we're seeing, and again, we go out and campaign, we're a small community, we're a very proud community. We see a lot of frustration from our residents. We're not making it up. Now, we can deal with, gee, there were only 11 tr transfer requests last year. That, again, is a result of frustration with this process and, frankly, the lack of uh, confidence that they're going to be accepted. Mm -hmm. Again, we've heard from a lot of past parents who have had children and they say it's about time and they have, they have stories. We're out there. We hear about it. We are here to represent our residents. That is our purpose here. We know our residents are very frustrated with this. We know our residents want this changed. That's why we are here. We are not getting the cooperation of Fullerton Unified School District. They are not meeting with us. We're the elected representatives, and they do not respect the elected representatives to even discuss this with us. That's our frustration. That's why we are strongly supporting this bill. We would love to talk with them. I really would like to meet them personally. So, so, so again. So you've never met them, and they've never, you've called them? We you've have written them, and they've them, never responded. We, they have not I responded. I think that's a problem. I think it is a problem. I don't know problem. that it needs and a that's bill part to of solve our that frustration, problem. sir. That really okay. is. We would love to solve this. Thank you. We really would. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I could just add one more thing. Uh, this, th just one thing. You know what? This is the first time that we've actually met the board president. And another thing is that we had an agreement with them up until 2007. Anaheim Union High School District and Fullerton Joint Union High School District had an agreement up until 2007. Got it. Thank you. That was in the analysis. Thank you. Any other members of the committee wish to come? I was just going to simply say, um, you know, I, I appreciate the, the advocacy here. And, you know, having served on the school board, I know there were two things that always bring a lot of folks to the meeting. One is when you change bell times, when schools start and stop. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. Anything else can happen, but when you change the time that schools start and stop, you know, people come to the board, and, and it's never a happy situation because there's always somebody who wins, loses in their mind. So that's the difficult. The other piece is drawing boundaries for schools. That is always a difficult piece. Someone will always be close to the line and feel they should be over the line. I mean, and so it doesn't matter where you put the line. There will be someone near the line. I mean, so it's one of these kind of very local issues, and that's why I'm wondering how it made its way to Sacramento. I can kind of understand what, what went on, but it's so local that it really needs to stay local, that, that, that if there are problems with the school board, and obviously there, this is an ongoing, long-term problem, uh, I could see if we open this can of worm in Sacramento, uh, I, I can imagine what will happen. 
I could also imagine how I would feel if I were a school board member in, in San Diego Unified with all the boundary issues we had and all the folks who felt they were winners and losers every time we drew a boundary. If all of those people came to Sacramento and, I, and, and my legislator wrote a law about everybody, them putting people in places with no regards for my budget, my school sizes, my enrollment issues, I mean, you know, I'd feel as a school board member, why am I here? And I think that, so it's such a local issue that it makes it almost impossible for us at this level to engage because all of us probably have very similar issues in our district. That if we begin to bring these issues forward with who is in what boundary, I can tell you, I had that, we had it with elementary school, we had it with middle school, we had it with high school, and especially when you have a district like San Diego, there are always folks close to the line who feel they should be over the line. And there will be always people who go get addresses in other places, I know that too, to, in order to go there. So. It's, it's such a local issue that I find it difficult to be supportive of it because I know that there's a local school board and a county school board and all those other kind of entities that are there that really are designed to handle this much more effectively than we would. Thank you. Thank you. Any further uh, committee members? Mr. Thurman. At the risk of going after Dr. Weber. <laughs> um, I just want to appreciate the author. Um, because I do think that the legislature should always be thinking about kids and education. I, you know, there's a reason why we spend more than 50% of our budget on education, because it really is our most important issue. Um, and, and I just want to appreciate you for that. I mean, we often don't agree on issues, but you always, I always see your passion, your advocacy for helping California's children succeed educationally, and I want to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you know, I'm just struggling with this because I'm not sure why we're hearing this, and I don't mean that in any disrespectful way. Um, and I appreciate the mayor and the council member and others who've come and parents. I, I just don't see how the legislature was intended to intervene in an issue that deals with boundaries. And, you know, I also served on a school board, and, and I was a city council member. And there were many times when our city council and our school board were at odds. I can tell you I couldn't believe it. I went from the city council to the school board, and everybody said, you're crazy for doing that. And then there were all these fights. And then I said, wait a minute, these are all our kids. They come from the same community. It doesn't matter if we're on school district, school board, city council, they're all our kids. And, but I just think that maybe the real issue is legislation that changes how families can choose what school they want to go to in a district. Because every single, I'm sure in just about every community in California, People are struggling with fake addresses because they want a different quality of education or there's an issue. And if the assembly starts to intervene now, where do we stop? Where do we stop on the issue of boundaries? And if we do this here, as it was said previously by the chair, it's precedent setting. Next week, I guarantee you there will be a bill from another member. And, 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 and so where do we stop it? And so, again, I want to offer respect and appreciation for you for bringing your passion, your advocacy. I just don't see a, a framework for the assembly to act on it, and I just wanted to show you that, and I'm unable to support it this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question, uh, is Ms. Honig here, I believe, from Fullerton? The board, president. the board president who came up and spoke? Yeah. I hope she still stays. Could, could you come forward, please? It's just a quick question. Would you, would you be mil willing to meet with these folks to discuss the issue? Yes, that would be fine. Um, we um, typically meet. I just need a yes or a no. Yes. One syllable. Yes. You're mm -hmm. willing to meet with them? Mm -hmm. before you, you'll bring your superintendent? Yes. Yes? Okay. Maybe a couple other board members? Absolutely. All right. All right. I'm in a real meeting. Could I hold you responsible you. for that? No, <laughs> okay. seriously. Right. Um, Thank you. Seriously, would Thank you? you. Yes. It's in the record. <laughs> it is on the record. Uh, it's on the record. I got gotcha. you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so supportive. Thank you. And Ms. Kim, uh, uh, <laughs> the, motion is, the, the, the motion is due pass to the Appropriations Committee. You may close. Thank is, you. I'm sorry, the motion is oppose. No. <laughs> oh, we're going to